What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you an updated guide on how to install Game Boy Advance emulator, Nintendo DS, PlayStation Portable, and so many others on iOS 8.2. So this is an extremely easy method, and it works on all devices, from the newest iPhone 6 Plus all the way down to the oldest iPhone 4S. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys, I am running this newest firmware, and as you can see, I am on iOS 8.2, this is the public version. All right, so I do have these emulators right here. I have several ROMs. I'm just gonna go ahead and load a couple, show you guys that uh, they are working. So in here, let me just go ahead and load Zelda real quick. And there you go. So this is working perfectly fine on iOS 8.2 and let me go ahead and show you a couple other games. So the new Game Boy Advance emulator, uh, GBA4 iOS, now supports the Game Boy Color ROMs as well. So in here I have a silver version of Pokemon. Let me go ahead and load that, show you guys this as well. Now what I really like about the new version is that it has haptic feedback. When you press the buttons, the device will vibrate. It almost feels like you're pressing a button. So as you guys can see, I do have Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Color game. Pokemon Silver running right here, really cool, and it works so well, I'm really surprised. So that's Game Boy Advance, and here I also have Nintendo DS, and I've got Pokemon Black right here. I just want to show you that does work as well. Now depending on the settings, of course, you're going to have different performance and your device as well on every device, but generally it does work well. So cool, there is Pokemon Black. All right, so I also have a PlayStation Portable emulator right here, and I have uh, Ratchet and Clank loaded right here. So, I mean, depending on which game you have, again, you're gonna have varied performance between all of them. Uh, right here, I'm not getting optimal frames per second, but a lot of people that have downloaded PSP games are gonna you know, be able to tell you which ones work the best. And you have original Flappy Bird. There's a lot to choose from. I'm not showing all of them. You can also download PS1 emulator, uh, original Game Boy, you know, there's several other ones. So there is one catch, it's not free. The reason I'm making this video at all is because there's no free way to download any of these right now on the newest version. Once a free alternative is made possible, I will make a video for it. But for now, I wanted to show you guys it is possible, but you do have to pay. So unfortunately, it's $10 for a one year subscription, but it makes sense. I mean, these guys put in so much work into the store. So it's called Build Store. And here it is. So from here, you can download all of these. So it's not just limited to those four or three emulators that I did show you guys. There's movie box, free movies, uh, screen recorder. So all this cool stuff, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all of these you can download straight from here on iOS 8.2. Now, I am in no way being paid or endorsed by these guys. I'm just showing you guys a method that does work on the newest version. So you guys will need to register your device. It is device specific. So once you pay, it's only for one device. I do have my device right here and you pretty much have to pay through PayPal or credit card right here. And once you guys are done, you'll be able to download anything you want from here. So let me go ahead and download a Super Nintendo emulator. Show you guys how this is done and go ahead and click install. It does take a moment. So once you guys initially pay, I noticed it takes about 10 minutes to register your device in the system and only then can you download them. Now the good thing about this is no matter which firmware update comes out, you will always be able to download this. I mean, there will be no restriction, no firmware restriction. You don't have to worry about losing your save data or whatever if you update. So that's a really good benefit of this. It's like you register your device on their website and it's permanently receiving these emulators. So there are several different ways of downloading ROMs. I know it's really important to download ROMs along with emulators, but with the Game Boy Advance one, it's super simple. Let me just show you how that works. I'm gonna go back to menu. And in here, you're gonna have a little search icon right here. It won't take you to any specific website, but it will take you to Google. From here, I recommend MU Paradise. So in here, click on this guy. I'm just gonna walk you through uh, each one of these, you know, the biggest emulators. But in here, I'm gonna go ahead and select Game Boy Advance ROMs right here. And I'm just gonna look at one of the most popular ones. Again, this is illegal to download games or ROMs that you do not own, so you must own these in person. And uh, anyways, so once you do select it, you wanna scroll down and click on the download link. Page will reload, you gotta go down again, and here it is. So there's a little wait time you gotta go through, and eventually it will start the download. So here we go, 
you can rename the app in here and go ahead and download it. So this is the progress bar up here. It's going to be a little purple progress bar. And you have a Game Boy Advance tab, Game Boy Color. And as you can see, here's the one I just downloaded. So these actually work really well. And this is permanent. Remember, you don't have to worry about a newer firmware disabling this from working, which is really cool. And there's that. So Game Boy Advance is the easy one. Now, if you want to install Nintendo DS ROMs or PSP ROMs, it gets a little bit more complicated. I'm going to walk you through. It's still really simple. It's just you can't do it from the device. You do have to connect it to a computer to do it. So before I do get into this, click on this link right here. It'll take you to all the downloads you do need, all the links, and there will be a full tutorial in there. But anyways, let's go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and install ROMs for Nintendo DS, PSP, and even other emulators. All right, so in the download provided, you guys will get a link to iFunbox. Now for this application, you guys do not need a jailbreak. You can still transfer all the files that you do need. Anyways, go ahead and right click, open it on a Mac or run as administrator on a Windows. And this is the window that you will get. So in here, you guys wanna to go to user applications. And let's say I wanna put a Nintendo DS ROM. So we're gonna go into NDS for iOS. And same thing for the PlayStation emulator. If you wanna put a ROM on the PlayStation emulator, you're gonna go into PPSSPP, and we're gonna go into the Documents tab on both of them. So go into the Documents tab, and as you can see, I already have a ROM right here. But anyways, let me take you to the website where you do need to download the ROMs. And there are many to choose from, you know, one of them isn't necessarily the right one. And here's MU Paradise. This is probably the standard one I really like. Uh, and here you wanna to go to ROMs, ISOs, and select your device. So we're gonna be downloading for a Nintendo DS. Here are NDS ROMs. And select the version of the game that you wanna download that you own, Heart Gold. All right, cool. So in here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna click on the download link and then on this link again right here. So it will actually ask you for a captcha sometimes, no problem, but in about five seconds here, it is gonna download we're gonna go ahead and transfer it onto our device. It's actually really quick and really simple. All right, so the download has finished. Now I'm still open in the NDS section on iFunbox right here. And in my downloads over here, I'm gonna go ahead and locate it, extract it. And now that we're in the file, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the NDS file. Now, if you're using the PSP emulator, it's gonna be either an ISO or CSO file. But anyways, the NDS, Go ahead and transfer into here. And as you can see, it is instant. In here, you will see that ROM. Let's go ahead and run that guy. And cool, it does work. So as you can see, you know, it's just a little bit of a hassle going through your computer to do it, but they didn't give us that little search icon over here. Now let's talk about optimal settings for Nintendo DS for iOS. If you have an iPhone 5S or above, you will have no problems. Most games run perfectly, especially if you have the new iPad Air 2. I mean, that thing's just a beast for emulation. Anyways, so I wanna talk about settings. Go ahead and click up here, and we're gonna go ahead and go into the settings over here. And the frame skip, if you're having trouble on an older device, it's best to set the frame skip all the way to uh, full right here. I keep it on auto. That's probably the best choice for you. Now, depending on which control scheme you want, you choose that right here. You can choose vibration for the haptic feedback, which I do like actually. And you can show frames per second down there. So there's really not much to tweak here in terms of performance, but frame skip, if you mess around with this, depending on which game, you will get different results and of course your device. So besides Nintendo DS, let's talk about the PSP emulator and the settings for it. So let's go ahead and go in here, go in settings. And these are probably the best settings you can get for most games. Make sure that non-buffered rendering is enabled, simulate block transfer is enabled, and frame skipping is off. Now, frame skipping, again, is the one area you're gonna wanna tweak if you have any sort of issues with a certain game. And of course, alternate. Go between all the settings in here. You know, keep these all unchecked and make sure that they look just like this on your device. Texture scaling off, upscale X and BRZ. Of course, you can modify any of these, but I found that these are the optimal settings for most games. All right, so that's just about it. Once you have all those settings, you will have a pretty good result with most games. Anyways, these are the two emulators that have the most issues with rendering and frames per second, so you shouldn't have any kind of problems. All right, so that's just about it, guys. That's how you can install just about any emulator on your device on the newest iOS 8.2 firmware. Unfortunately, it's not free. That's the only downside to it, but it makes sense. I mean, all of those emulators in one place, super simple to use. You're paying for a very refined service. And of course, once a free alternative is made 
possible for any of these emulators, I will be posting a video. And guys, if you guys have any issues, check that link down below in the description. It will have all of the downloads, all the links to the ROMs and stuff in there. So check that out. And I do hope you enjoy these emulators. It's just great that you can get this on the newest firmware, although you do have to pay, but still great that that option is there. Anyways, enjoy all of these emulators, guys. Hope you have a great time reliving all of your childhood memories. Peace.